the VR60 12 gauge shotgun. Let's check it out. Rock Island Armory's VR60 is a 12 gauge shotgun, semi-automatic, based as far as the design on the AR-15. Uh, it has all the same controls, I mean it feels like an AR until you shoot it. And then it's like an AR-15 on steroids. Oh yeah! Rock Island Armory is known for its 1911s, I mean they make a really solid 1911 pistol and yet a very reasonable price and so that's one of the things that you know rock island armory is known for is quality they do have a limited lifetime warranty on their 1911s they also have it right here on the vr60 it fires up to three inch magnums so it can handle about anything magazines empty the chambers empty uh, one thing about this gun itself that differs from the ar-15 as far as controls is your uh, charging handle right here uh, and this is very similar to the AK-47 as far as in location but otherwise all the features on here are very much AR-15. The magazines all steel which makes it nice these are five round magazines and it does come with two and there is a small lip that protrudes out the back when it's not loaded once it's loaded you'll notice that it kind of goes down so if you're going to load this magazine unloaded you have to kind of put it on the back and then lift it in if it's loaded it'll go straight in and then right here is the mag release, Just press and you can pull it out. Safety right here, same place on the AR, it's really easy to get to uh, when you're gripping the rifle. And then also your bolt release, when the bolt's pulled back, just pop it and it'll drop. It won't drop on an empty magazine though. The pistol grip is a little bit larger than your standard AR, uh, it's more like an ATI pistol grip, but it fills the hand nice, has grooves, and this is one piece from the stock to the grip and then all the way forward. Now the stock has a molded in cheek riser, kind of like a Monte Carlo, but it's on both sides. Also you have a padded butt pad, and there's also an option with just the straight pad, uh, according to what kind of length you want. Sling attachment on the back, and there is a sling attachment here at the front. The carry handle is removable with this one screw, and it does have a sight right here on the back. Now the knob actually just goes from the standard sight to an aperture sight. This is not where you adjust it. But there is a windage knob underneath where you can turn it. And the front sight post is also removable. The front of the magwell is molded. Uh, and of course you see the ribs here. Uh, and this is about the same size as an AR-10. The forearm has the Picatinny rail that runs all along the top. This is polymer and all along the bottom. And then there are Picatinny rail sections on either side. So you can put lights or lasers or whatever you want to. You could even put a bipod on here, you know, if that's what you wanted to do. The receiver is made from aluminum and you can also get options where the forend is made in aluminum. This is the VR60 standard. Uh, they do make a VR60 plus and those do come with the aluminum forends. And of course, with the receiver and this section right here of the Picatinny rail, and we'll look at that when we remove the carry handle. Now there's a lever right here at the top of the magwell. Uh, it actually brings down the feeding ramp and locks it into place. The bolt can go home. With that said, you're not gonna be able to load a magazine in there, so I think this is a gas shutoff valve for single shot. Bring it back around. Enter your mag in, you can see, you can't drop that. As far as the weight of the V60 with the magazine, seven pounds, 10 ounces. And the overall length of the VR60 is 39 inches. Now included in this small box, there are two other choke tubes and a wrench. And these are Benelli Beretta style. So these are very plentiful, a lot of different options. 
Also, we have a gas adjustment ring here, either for heavy or for small loads. And again, guys, we shot this with standard birdshot all the way up to buckshot with the existing gas adjustment piece in there. But the one I have here is for heavy loads. Now we're gonna kinda of get into the inside a little bit and we're gonna remove the barrel. First thing you have to do is remove your carry handle. It holds on to this four end piece that you're gonna to need to pull out. It's very simple. And it's just held by this one screw, but there's a nut on the back. So just be careful, don't lose that. We're gonna pull the carry handle right off. Now then we're gonna remove the nut up front. And this is on a tube. And now we can remove the fore end and the whole piece just comes right off. Again, you can't take this off with the carry handle attached. Now there's a knurled nut right here. Just go ahead and take it off. Now to pull the barrel out, you need to pull back on your bolt and we're gonna lock it at the back. And then the barrel will move out about this far. Then you'll need to release your bolt and then the barrel comes off. Now there's a lot of options with this. You're gonna be able to possibly have replacement barrels for different lengths. This is a 20 inch barrel. Right here at the back, you can just pull out the gas adjustment piece. And this is for the low powered rounds. And then of course this is marked right here on the rim for heavy loads. Slip it right into place if we wanna go with heavier loads. We're gonna leave the light load ring which is marked right across here. Now you can do any kind of cleaning or maintenance. I'm not gonna take the bolt out because at this point right now, I haven't found any information on how to take that out. So I don't, want, I don't wanna not be able to put it back together. But at least you can see you know, the workings. This is a gas operated system. And of course you see the spring here for the recoil. Guys, I'm telling you because of the gas system, the recoil on this is really nice. But this section here is an aluminum rail, so you're going to get some stability with this part of the rail. So any kind of red dot or a small scythe that you put here is going to give you a lot more return to zero. Now to reassemble, we're going to go ahead and put our barrel back on with the bolt fully uh, at forward at first. And this will get it lined up. And then when it sets into place, bring your bolt back and the barrel will just follow. You'll want to go ahead and get the bolt latch in place. Uh, while you finish because otherwise it's going to push the barrel on out. Go ahead and put our ring back on. Make sure you tighten it down good. Next we're going to take our forearm, slide it over the barrel. Locks right in next to your Picatinny rail and then return your tube piece. Lock it down and you're good to go. We're going to return our charging handle. And you want to make sure that you have enough clearance for your screw to go through one of the Picatinny slots. And guys, don't forget that small nut in the back. <laughs> Tighten it down and we're back in business. We took the VR60 to the range and I was really looking for a lot more recoil than it gives. I mean, you're definitely shooting 12 gauge uh, but we were shooting a lot of buckshot and um, really it was very manageable. I mean, the size of this gun is fairly large, but it's light at the same time. Uh, I think knowing that you know you have that same dimensions and the same feel as your AR kind of has that familiarity with it when you're putting it up on your shoulder uh, until you pull the trigger. And it's definitely, it has more of a punch. We were shooting buckshot, we were shooting some slugs. We also shot quite a bit of different type field loads. Some of the magnum loads, but it's still fed with your standard field loads, which kind of surprised me, your birdshot. Uh, I did have one malfunction where it just didn't quite fully seat uh, after shooting kind of a rapid string of fire. But overall, we didn't have any other issues with it. I mean, it just functioned. Uh, the magazines go in easily enough, and uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to if you're used to shooting the AR-15. I mean, there are di some definite differences with it. It's just beefier and a little bit bulkier. But of course, it needs it for the 12 gauge. Uh, I would say this is probably more in the size of an AR-10. Putting on a nice little red dot on here or a low magnification shotgun scope and uh, you'd be good to go. Now these shotguns are not made by Arms Corps. They're made by Dera Arms in Turkey, uh, which makes some really good high quality guns. Uh, these are made to Rock Island Specs though. Everything, this is an exclusive with Rock Island Armor. You can't get this from other companies. 
and they have a lot of say in the quality control and these do fall under their uh, lifetime limited warranty. And one thing that Rock Island Armory is trying to do right now is to make these shotguns here in the U.S. Now there was some mention at SHOT Show about possibly having a folding stock version and again with the other versions that they have uh, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of accessories come into play with this shotgun system. And from all the things that I understand, these are in high demand, and I understand why. The recoil is mild, and with the different options, using choke tubes that are Benelli or Beretta, I mean, you know, and just the weight being light, and yet it's the AR-15 platform. So I think that this is a great shotgun, tactical shotgun, hunting shotgun, uh, or just going out and having a big time. The price on the VR60 runs between the $400 to $450 range from what I was seeing online. And I think there's a lot of cheaper models that are similar to this, but the reliability on the VR60 is superior. I've heard a lot of horror stories with some of the others. All right, as far as pros and cons of the VR60, the big pro is that it has all the AR-15 controls. It makes it nice, everything's familiar, and it's really easy to, to get to it. Again, the reliability was exceptional. One malfunction, uh, that was early on, didn't have any others. Uh, as far as a lot of the features on here with the Picatinny rails, uh, you know, this is a polymer body. I mean, it's pretty much polymer, uh, except for some of the interior and then the barrel. Uh, so it gives it kind of a, you know, kind of a cheaper feel to it. But yet, with all the polymer guns out on the market, this is really falling in line with what we're seeing. But it seems to be solid. The weight's light, so it's easy to maneuver. Uh, with the detachable five round magazines, especially in a shotgun, that makes it really nice to be able just to come in and to, to bring in an extra five rounds without loading them one by one. As far as overall durability, we'll ha that remains to be seen. But you can put a small red dot on here or a low magnification shotgun scope, and you could use this for in a lot of different roles, including hunting. Uh, and because of the lightweight, it makes it really nice to carry out into the field. Uh, as far as cons go, the price, $400 to $450, you know, it's not bad for a 12-gauge shotgun. Uh, a little pricier than some of the other imports that I've seen. Another con would be that we did have a malfunction. Again, it was early on, uh, but none other than that. It is a large shotgun, so I would kind of add that into the cons, uh, even though it is lightweight. For a 12-gauge shotgun, and you can really do a lot of things with it, I think that the pros far outweigh any kind of cons. Now, I want to thank Rock Island Armory for sending the VR60 for this test and evaluation. Uh, I do want to recommend, though, that you go and watch other reviews, look at what people are saying. And from everything that I've seen so far, uh, these guns have been reliable, and they've been pretty much up to par on a great shotgun. Um, so check it out, Rock Island Armory, VR60. Uh, this is an excellent shotgun. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Just the way this gun feels, it just feels. It feels like a feels. And we were getting great results. We're getting great results. We're getting great results. You can pull it. Oops. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Ha, ha, ha.